Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kyle Thalman, aka Coach Kyle. I'm an engineer, gymnast, coach, physicist, philosopher, all that good stuff. Um, I'm also the inventor of the wizard coaching method, named aptly so because it works like magic. <laughs> anyway, um, today's question is how do you motivate kids that just don't want to do what you want them to do? Conditioning! That's the answer. Uh, not physical conditioning, conditioning of the mind. Now, most of this is actually based on behavioral psychology. So when I learned about this stuff, it was, um, it's like amazing. It took my coaching to an entirely new level. It was just crazy how effective um, these little concepts uh, worked on the kids, uh, on getting them to be motivated, to keep working, to, to work while I'm over there looking this way, they're behind my back, and they're still working hard. They're still focused. So really, this, this was amazing for me to learn and implement in my coaching. Now, this video is going to be part one of a series because there's like preschoolers, and then like four to 12 is you have to use slightly different techniques, and then, you know, teenagers are a little bit more sophisticated, so you have to use different techniques for them. So this is part one. I'm going to go over the little ones, the, the guys, you know, from four to 12 most rec classes and like lower level competitive gymnastics teams will be in this range. So this may sound a little bit controversial, but you basically have to condition, you know, little kids uh, like they were puppies. <laughs> um, a, a, the, a great resource is uh, Don't Shoot the Dog by Karen Pryor. Uh, it's amazing. It goes really in deep into the behavioral psychology I mean, I read this at, at least four or five times, just trying to get all the information out and then using the, the same tricks that she'll try on like, you know, uh, a puppy or like an elephant or something on an eight year old and it works and it works really, really well. So the, uh, most of these are, uh, most of these concepts are basically taken from that and a few other um, psychology principles and books that I've read. Okay, are you ready? This is the entire concept. It's pretty simple. First, reward good behavior. Second, punish bad behavior. Third, ignore everything in between. That's it. Now I classify bad behavior as anything that's dangerous or like extremely disruptive, just unacceptable behavior. Like somebody's gonna get hurt or you know it's distracting somebody else and they're gonna get hurt. Between good behavior and bad behavior, there's a lot of, I mean, if they're not listening to you, yeah, it sucks, but you don't need to address it because it's not dangerous and it's not disrupting other kids. You know, just ignore it until they turn around and go, why am I not getting praise or rewards, you know? Here is a key point that so many people get wrong. They misunderstand about like classical conditioning, good behavior, give them reward. You have to give them the reward or do the punishment immediately after the behavior, okay? So stickers at the end of class don't mean anything. They're like, yeah, I got a sticker. So, okay, the way your brain is wired is to, if you did something good, your brain gives you a reward immediately. Okay, if you did something bad, usually it's like you stepped on something and it's pain, so it, it, it punishes you immediately. Okay, if nothing happens, your brain says, oh, that didn't work, try something else. <sighs> it just, it kills me that uh, you know, people are like, oh yeah, stickers at the end of class. It's like you behaved really well for a 45 minute class and, or, or an hour long class and you get a sticker at the very end. That's insane. There were, they probably had a hundred good behaviors in between you know, the class that you should have been rewarding the entire time, okay? The sticker at the end does almost nothing. Now, if you have a marble jar for a pizza party, and you go, all right, uh, you have to give them the marble immediately. So they did something awesome. Here's your marble. Go throw it in the jar. Yay. Okay, that's a, that's a good reward. But it doesn't work if you know they did something good and then at the end of the rotation, 20 minutes later, or at the end of practice, it's like, all right, you did three good things. Here's three marbles. They're getting a reward and their brain is looking for something that they did right then that to attach to it like standing in line maybe you've just rewarded but you didn't reward all the other good behaviors that you're trying to reward okay i think i've beaten this dead horse into the ground and through the ground um, but really remember rewards and punishments must happen immediately after the behavior Ugh. all right moving on to good behaviors 
So for good behaviors, first, what you need to do is make a list of the good behaviors you want. Okay. If you don't know the good behaviors you're trying to reinforce, you're not going to reinforce them. Okay. You have to have like a list or, or like a thought process, like something that's like, all right, if they do this, that's when I reward them. So if like, uh, the main things I do is paying attention when I talk, if they're looking at, if I'm giving explanations, they're looking in my eyes, I'm like, good. I'll be like, yeah, thank you for listening. Awesome. Okay. That's, that's clear, easy thing. Um, another one is like focusing on their turn. If I see they're trying and they're working hard. Awesome. Um, staying on task. That's another one. If I turn my back and I'm, you know, giving a correction over there and then I look back and I catch them doing something good. Oh yeah. That is an excellent time to reward them. Okay. Rewarding them to work behind my back when I'm not looking genius. That's you got to as often as you can catch them doing good stuff behind your back and reward it because it will pay dividends. Okay, once you have a list of the good behaviors you want, you want to create a list of rewards. Okay, how do you reward them? Like for puppies, you just give them a treat or you rub their head. Okay, for kids, most uh, young kids in this age, you know, four to 12, they want attention, they want approval, they want praise, uh, they want to learn. Kids just love to learn. They want to play. They want to feel included. And uh, they want to feel accomplishment. Like they're getting better and they're accomplishing something and they're moving on. So use all of these things. You know, the, the cheapest one is is praise and attention. You're just like, they did something right. You go, yes, that was awesome. Good job. You know, anything that they're doing that is what they you want them to do, reward that immediately. Okay, if you catch them doing something good behind your back, like I said, it's an amazing chance to be like, yes, you're awesome. High five. Thank you for working. Well, I'm not yelling at you, you know, uh, stuff like that. You can also reward them with like uh, little games or, or, you know, a chance to play. I actually used to bring like slinkies or small toys. I had foam swords for the boys team, like the little boys. Um, it's like, you did this all right. You were trying really hard. You made this skill here. You get 30 seconds to play with this sword or 30 seconds to play with this slinky. And these kids would try, they would like kill themselves just to like, they would work so hard. I could, it was unbelievable to see like a six year old just like do 50 push ups. And I'm like, Oh my God, that's amazing. I was like, here you go. Here's your slinky to play with a slinky for like 30 seconds. That's like nothing. And then they, the other kids were like, Oh snap, he got to play with a slinky. I want to play with a slinky. And then they would work harder. So you're conditioning everybody to focus and work hard on what you want them to work hard on. After you've established rewards and uh, good behavior, now you have to come up with a list of unacceptable, dangerous, bad behavior. Okay, these are things like hitting, biting, uh, spitting, you know, just any physical assault on you or the other kids. You know, that you got to put a stop to that immediately. Just like shut it down. Um, also, like screaming uncontrollably from un uncontrollably from anger, not from pain. Like if they run into something with their face and they're like bleeding. Yeah. I, I could see them screaming uncontrollably cause it really hurts. Um, but if they're just frustrated or they're throwing a tantrum, shut it down immediately. Okay. You got to punish that behavior quick and make it stop. And then the other thing I really, uh, frown on, like I'll, I'll get really serious and really in their face really quick about distracting other kids in the class or while they're taking their turn, especially while they're taking their turn. I've stopped classes of like six year olds and be like, look, if he's running for the vault and you distract him, he's going to get hurt and you're going to feel bad, you know? And then they're like, Oh, I didn't realize that. And then all of a sudden they stop distracting each other. So I've kind of jumped ahead, but after you figure out what the bad behavior is, that's just totally unacceptable. Then you figure out punishments. Basically these, you need them to feel bad for one to two seconds. That's it. And then you want to move on. You forgive them and move on. Okay. You don't like the way the brain is wired. Your brain is looking for dangerous things and things, basically dangerous things. So if you feel bad, you feel scared. It, your brain immediately goes, Oh, that's dangerous. Or that behavior is bad. I need to stop it real quick. It only takes like one second of them feeling bad to fix the behavior. And it'll, and then what you want to do is move on, forgive them and move on immediately because they felt bad, but you don't want them to keep feeling bad if they start doing good stuff. Okay. You want them to like fix that behavior. As soon as they do something good, reward them. So they feel good and it doesn't suck. Stupid timer. Okay. So ways you can punish kids. Um, the, the easiest and cheapest one is a hard glare. Some kids, if you just glare at them hard, like just 
you know, make a mean face, they're like, oh, snap, what am I doing? You know, and they'll they'll feel scared and they'll go, oh, I'm stopping. Um, uh, next is like an aggressive tone of voice. If you're like, hey, stop it, you know, you get really negative and aggressive, they'll feel that, tell them to stop, and then, you know, immediately forgive and move on. Um, you can also use aggressive body language. Um, if a kid is like punching or hitting or, uh, you know, really being a pain and disrupting at, like the whole class, I will get, you know, this close to their face, a really aggressive body uh, language. You know, I'm invading their space hard and lowering my voice. I'm like, you need to stop that now. And then like, they're like, oh, crap, he's getting real. You know, I haven't assaulted them. I'm not hurting them anyway. And then, like I said, one to two seconds and then back off, forgive them, move on. Another thing I like, uh, I'll use a lot is separation from other kids in class. If we're stretching and one kid is just not doing anything or he's disrupting everybody, we're like, all right, you're going to stretch on the other side of the floor. I can still keep an eye on him, but he's nowhere near his friends. He's not getting any positive feelings, and it, it, it really sucks. But he's going to stop that uh, those behaviors really quick. Um, you can also use, like, timeouts. Um, you can physically restrain them if they're just going bonkers. And then last thing I do is remove them from class. That is like the last, you know, you got to calm down, fix yourself. Once you're good and you can behave, you can come back. Now, here's the really tricky part. In between good behavior and bad behavior, ignore it. Okay, if they're not doing what you want them to do, but it's not dangerous and they're not disrupting other kids, ignore it. What I mean by that is like, don't punish or reward it. So if they're not paying attention, you're telling everybody, you're like, hey, get straight legs. We're doing a handstand now. And then one kid's like looking at the ceiling, goofing off, picking his nose, whatever. You don't have to punish his behavior. You could be like, hey, Jeff, pay attention. But like beyond that, it's his fault for not paying attention. He needs to learn that if he doesn't pay attention, he's not going to know what to do. He'll learn pretty quickly that way. At this point, you might be saying, but if you're not like paying attention to them, and, you know, correcting them and coaching them, they're not going to learn anything. Well, they're not paying attention, they're not focusing, they're not trying, so why should I put effort into something that's not working? Okay, it, it might feel scary to be like, well, he's not trying, move on to the next kid. But this is, like, the subtle brilliance is as, as soon as you stop coaching him, he's not going to get better. That kid, like, you can't get better just automatically from gymnastics by messing around, you have to have somebody coach you tell you what to do. So everybody else is going to start to move on, and that kid is going to feel left out. They're like, why is everybody else getting praise? Why is everybody else progressing, moving on to the next skill, and I'm not? Oh, maybe I should focus and pay attention. Okay, here's a quick example of how I would go about it. Uh, we'll say Fred is the kid that's just not paying attention. He's not trying. So I would like, and uh, we'll pretend we're working on like handstands and then cartwheels and round offs. Um, got him in a line and I'm like, all right, Johnny, awesome. Nice straight legs. Good job. Move on to your cartwheel. Next guy, Jake, uh, close, close. Get those legs a bit straighter and then you can move on. Fred, you got to try to do the handstand before you can move on. Move to the next, <laughs> you know, go back around. Johnny, amazing. That was a great cartwheel. Move on to round off. Jake, nice job. You finally got those legs straight on the handstand. Move on to cartwheel. Fred, okay. Okay, if Fred is not even trying, I'll just look him up and down and be like, you're supposed to be doing something. I told you what to do. If he does nothing or it's not good enough, I mean, if he tries, I'll be like, okay, good. Give him a neutral correction, but I'll still move on until he's really working hard. I don't give him the reward until he's doing what I want, which is focusing, working hard on what, whatever we're supposed to be doing. My acting skills may suck, but hopefully you get the idea. Like I said before, when I learned these tactics, my coaching level just went way up there. Because all of a sudden, I didn't have problem kids in the gym. I didn't have kids that weren't motivated. Like after like a few just a few practices, everybody gets on board. They all start to. They all want to work. They want to get more corrections. They want to learn. They want. They're just dying for your attention. They're like, please give me corrections and attention and praise, because it feels good. And they, they're just so ready to work. It's insane what you can accomplish once you've kind of introduced this, this conditioning into your classes, mental conditioning. Quick note, before you start implementing this method into your uh, coaching strategy, make sure your, your, your supervisor, whoever's you know, above you knows, hey, I'm trying this method. 
It may seem crazy, it may seem counterintuitive, um, but this is, you know, have them watch this video or whatever. Just like have them understand you're trying something new and hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't work within a few, tr like a few practices, then don't use it. But from my experience, this works amazing. So another way you can implement this into your coaching strategy is to like get a bunch of coaches together or like if you're at a meeting, be like, oh, okay, I'm going to be the coach. You guys are going to be the students and have them like pick who's going to be the stubborn student or the bad student. And like they don't tell you which one it is. So you basically mock go like, all right, now we're teaching handstands and you basically teach them like it was a class. And, you know, you have to pay attention and figure out which student is the one that's not behaving and, um, you know, act accordingly. You do a couple rounds of this, and then it's going to be really easy to implement it later. If you guys have any questions or thoughts, let me down in the, let me know down in the comment section. Uh, please share this video if you thought it was helpful. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you want more videos. I'm Coach Kyle. Rock on.